We are here with Deborah Williams, who is the 2008 Teacher of the Year for the Rio Linda Union School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us ab about uh, where you teach and, and what you teach. Um, I teach in North Highlands, which is um, in the Sacramento area. I teach at an integrated art school. It's K through 8. I have a 2-3 classroom this year where I teach core curriculum in the morning and then in the afternoons I teach drama, musical theater, backstage theater, art to first through eighth graders all in the same class. And the name of the school? Creative Connections Arts Academy. Well, it's, tell, us a about, tell us about the school. Yeah. Well, it's three years old this year. Um, <clears throat> it was founded from a principle that if you integrate art into the curriculum in all areas that you'll find that students um, understanding of knowledge will be greater and um, it will raise test scores that was kind of the, the, the philosophy behind it so um, we take all um, types of students whether they be bilingual or if they have special needs and um, they can come in the only thing we require is that parents give so many hours because we find that children are more successful if a parent is involved in their child's education. Well, so tell me about how you, how you go about teaching. Okay, well in the morning um, I teach um, the core curriculum. So for instance, I teach math, science, social studies, reading and writing to my second and third graders. So we're, we're right now it's so hot, we're building solar cookers, we're learning about the solar system. So we're actually creating these boxes with tin foil inside to make um, and then we're going to cook cookies. So it's very hands-on and they understand the principle that the, of how far the sun is and how the earth rotates around and how to make them, but it's all through projects. So that's how it goes like in the morning. And then in the afternoon we divide up and on Monday, Wednesday, Friday we do what they call an exploratory class, which is a taste of something, something that you might be interested in learning about. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays it's a class that's would be sort of like your major in a, in a college or a high school. It's something you really know that you really want love and you want to do it throughout the year. So on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we do it by trimester. I teach different subjects. This trimester I am teaching uh, backstage theater where they learn how to run lights and how to run sound equipment, um, how to move lights, um, how to build backdrops and paint them and build props and then put them on stage as well as becoming a stage manager, um, how to write cues in and blocking and so forth on. So that's what I do. And we have first graders through eighth graders in the class. Um, and it seems really like it wouldn't work because there's so many age levels, but it really does because they talk together and they mix and that doesn't mean the eighth grader or the seventh grader is doing the work for the first grader because some first graders have a great skill. Maybe they really understand sound and it's, it's just innate or they may be wonderful artists or they may be good actors, and so we all learn from each other. So then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I teach a drama class and we go to competitions and we perform um, different productions throughout the year. And that, then I also have set first through eighth graders because our kindergartners go home at the halfway through the day. When you enjoy the arts with, with other subject matter, what kind of results do you see with the students? Well, I see... Um, that they understand math concepts and social studies concepts really well. I have better writers and readers because they're constantly reading plays and voice. So they have voice in their papers, which is really hard to get when you get a regular student. So if you have just the average student in average school, they may have trouble having a voice in their papers, but because they're acting so much, they get it really quickly. Um, because we have a teacher who does clay and does a lot of sculptures. Because of that, the math scores, I think, or the math grades go. They understand how to measure. Um, to, I was explaining that today we did grids, how to grid out your paper in, um, to, to draw a backdrop. And we have first graders who are learning how to use a ruler. So when you get to that subject in, in math and you have to learn how to use a ruler, they already know how to use it because they've already practiced it with drawing, which drawing is fun. What do you enjoy the most about teaching? Um, I enjoy the kids. I enjoy the fact that I get to um, really interact with the children in a different way. Um, I get different age levels than I did at my other schools that I've worked at where I was basically in one set grade. So I get an intermix. So the sense of community at our school is very um, 
strong. All the teachers know all the students and all the teachers, students know all the teachers because they actually have them in class. So I think I enjoy that most. I also don't have principals saying, oh, you're doing that play again. Um, when are you going to get to, oh, page seven? Because they, it's, they want you to integrate and they want you to do more project-based learning. When you're doing the integrated um, teaching, what kind of special challenges do you face as a teacher? Um, you know, the challenge that I find most most for me is that there's never enough money to <laughs> in the schools to buy the backdrops and the paint, and so that's my biggest challenge. It's not the teaching. Actually, I find it easier to teach here than I did at the other school where there was more. Um, observing you to make sure you're doing exactly or being on page, even though my principles were always really good because I got results. Um, I don't really believe in testing, state testing, so um, it's, a, it's a sore subject with me. So I, I don't look at that as a benchmark. I just know that that's what principals generally look at, and they say, oh, their kids' reading scores have gone up. Oh, their math scores have gone up. And so I was always really successful with that. The other thing I have a pro we have a problem with at our school is getting everything in within a certain time because we do move so fast. It's very accelerated. It, do it is very hard for certain kids to get all their work done on time or um, to stay up. And what we do for that is we provide what's called an opportunity class on Tuesdays and Thursdays where kids mm -hmm. can go in and, and have a, a, a quiet space to finish up work or finish up major projects. So it's obviously, it's a, it's a different kind of a, education. Yeah, we took, we took it and we went outside of, um, we don't want to think like the normal uh, regular school. And it was actually a concept created by two people in my, that are actually teachers at my school um, and a, an administrator who had this idea when they were going through the master's program that this would work. And I just got hired. I actually got hired the first year it opened. I interviewed because as soon as I heard about it, I was like, that is the school. That's where I belong. And um, since then we've grown. We're now a complete school where we started off with five classrooms and then we had 10 and now we have a full classroom of two kindergarten and first graders classrooms, a uh, second grade, a third grade, a, a two, three, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, two seventh, and two eighths. Wow, yeah, certainly So we've grown. gotten bigger. Well, got what's an, bigger. What inspired you to, to be a teacher in the first place? Um, well, I used to um, be in advertising, and uh, I was asked by a friend to cover an art class that she was teaching at a college and I was and I did that and it was fun so I they asked me to come back and do more art classes so I did and um, what I noticed when I was in there is that almost all of them were guys and um, or men because I think of them as children but they're not they're adults they were older than me and when I started talking to them they'd all dropped out of at junior high or high school um, and graphic design is a really competitive industry it's a very young industry and so it was heartbreaking to see that these people probably didn't have they weren't going to get the jobs that they really had you know wanted in because they were so old and I mean old being 30 mm -hmm. and um, which now I laugh at because I am yeah. much older than they are now but uh, so I was talking to my sister and saying that this really bothered me and she said well then you really need to go back and get your teaching credential and start lower and um, try to change that system and that's where it came about. Mm. Well, what would you say to those people out there who are thinking about teaching as a career? What would you say to them to make them want to consider it? Teaching is an amazing um, field. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's, you have all these children who um, look to you for guidance or they want to learn. Some of them don't, but you, you can always win those over. And there's nothing that can replace the feeling of when a child looks at you and says, oh my gosh, I got it, I see the pattern, or oh my goodness, I finally understand, or I can read, I read this story, I took this home and read it to my mom. There's nothing that will replace that feeling other than, you know, the benchmarks my son has, you know, and possibly getting married. But those things, are, those are highlights in your life. Um, I get highlights every single day. So if you're really serious about being a teacher, do it for the right reasons. It's not the money and you don't get enough time off. And no, you work really hard and there's always papers to grade. But if you really truly love kids and love to see them learn, then that's the, the job for you. Okay. Well, we appreciate your time. We're, we've been speaking with Deborah Williams, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2008 for the Rio Linda Union School District. Thank, Thank you. you.